Kelly, we're going to look at all of these things that I have here on the desk under the microscope. Okay. So take a look at them without magnification. What's that? Um, a plastic ruler. And next? A fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And then a yellow feather. All right. Then I think that's clay. Mm hmm. And that one says it's a flea. That's a flea, okay. Yeah. Now, before we uh, look at the rest of them, let's look at the plastic ruler and so that you kind of understand what's happening. Okay. I'll put the plastic ruler under here under the microscope. Okay, now the light is coming through from down below, going through the plastic ruler up here to this long lens and up here to the television camera. That's what that is right yeah. there. Right. Then the image goes down through these wires and ends up here on, on that monitor. TV. Okay. Yeah. So now we can find out how much we're magnifying by counting the number of lines that you see there on the television set. Okay, let me fix it, okay. get it so it's nice and even, and then you count Count the number of lines, how many? Okay. You... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, okay. Now, measure the width of the television screen. Okay. It's about 28 centimeters. Well, that's centimeters. Uh, 280 millimeters. Yeah. Okay. So you divide the 280 millimeters by 11. Okay, okay. and there's the calculator. 280 divided by 11 equals 25. Okay, so that means when we look at images here at relatively low magnification, we're seeing them 25 times bigger than they really are. Oh. Okay, and you notice when you looked at the plastic ruler, see all the scratches and junk on it? Yeah. You're seeing all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay, so really now the next up. thing is the fingerprint. You want to hand it to me, please? Okay. There is the edge, and here is what a fingerprint looks like, magnified 25 times. It looks like it's, that stuff is just dirt. Well, when you take a fingerprint, you actually put some form of dirt, uh, more likely carbon of some kind, yeah. and you stick it to the oil that's been left behind when the finger touches something. Yeah. So that's why it looks like dirt. Oh. And. Uh, the detectives, when they look at that, would recognize that as a loop. You see how it loops around? Yeah. That's one of the ways you identify uh, the kind of fingerprint that it is. Okay, now next. The feather. Okay. I wonder what that's going to be like. Now there is what it looks like. Now wow. let me move it down here. To, or let's go up here to this edge. Okay. Or out here to the edge like this. Now, whoops, that's a little too much light. Let me magnify it just a little more by going up and moving it over so that you can see what's happening with the, with the various strands. You can see the little strands yes. of feather. Now, you see, first of all, here's one, one of the sort of Sticks. veins of the feather coming yeah. up, and here's another vein over yeah. here. Then there are little things that come off of each of them. Yeah. Actually, they hook together. They and that, do? And that's what makes the feather nice and strong. Oh. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom up a little more and you watch. Yeah, they do kind of look See how they, together how they are right there. Right, they're all hooked together and that's what gives the feather its tremendous strength. Yeah. Okay, what was next? Um, the clay. The clay. There. Well, I think you'll be surprised. It turns out to be... Very interesting example of the work of an insect. I'll an zoom insect? down to low magnification and take a look at that section right there. Looks like all kinds of rocks. Well, they're not rocks. They're actually the loads of mud that a mud dauber wasp collects and brings back to build her nest out of. Wow. Each one of those things that look like a rock is one load, okay? Now she builds the whole nest, and I'll, I'll turn it over so that you can see the other side. There, you see each one of those lines is a cell. Yeah. That's one cell, then the next cell over there. Yeah, one, okay. two. Now three. the reason she does that, she deposits eggs in there, and now give me the other piece of mud. Okay. Because I'd like you to see inside. Ew. Matter, ooh. 
It looks like the bugs are still in there. Well, what happens is the female wasp not only builds her nest like this, but then catches insects and puts them into the, into the chamber so that when the young wasp emerges, hatches from the egg, it has something to eat. And oh. I have an idea that's what's left of some of the insects that she caught and put in there for her young ones to eat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's the last one? It's a flea. A flea. Have you ever had an animal that has had fleas? Yeah. Mm. What do they do when they get a flea bite? They scratch They it. scratch. And you, and you can see why when you take a look at a flea magnified about 25 times or so. Now, there it is at low magnification. I'll bring it up so we can really get a good look at it and put okay. some more light on it. And first of all, you know how a flea gets around? Well, does it walk? They walk, and, but they don't fly because they don't have any no. wings. It gets from one animal to the other by hopping. And see those two back legs back there? Yeah. They're very powerful and they can hop maybe 14, 15 times the length of a flea. It jumps like crazy. So it gets Holy. around like that. And then when it gets on an animal, then it uses that, that uh, piercing thing at the front like to suck that? out blood. And that's what makes the animal itch. So yeah. that's why they scratch, because the flea is biting them. In order to get some blood, in order to, to, for the female flea to use the blood to d develop uh, new fleas oh. as part of her food. Anyway, we've used a lot of expensive equipment here to look at, yeah. at things. You just get a good magnifying glass okay. that magnifies 10, 15 times, and look at the stuff around you. I think okay. you'll find all kinds of fascinating sights in the microscopic world. Yeah.